Good. Now call this meeting of Fairfield County Council to order Monday, <clears throat> uh, November 13, 2017, 6 p.m. Uh, first item on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. Do we have a motion? Seconded. It's been moved and properly seconded to approve the agenda as presented. Any discussion? Seeing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Seven and zero. Agenda is approved. Now we're down to invocation. Council Member Pauley, please. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to come and gather together th this day. We ask for your hand of blessing on this meeting. We ask that you would guide and direct our meeting so that it is full of wisdom and respect for one another. Thank you for helping us to accomplish our work and goals this day. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Pauley. Now we're down to the approval of minutes from the regular meeting, October 23, 2017. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. It's been moved and properly seconded to approve the minutes as presented from the regular meeting, October 23, 2017. Any discussion? Seeing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Seven and zero. Minutes from October 23, 2017 are approved. Now down to public presentation. We have one item tonight. Uh, Fairfield Behavioral Health Services Marion C. Smith Partner of the Year Award presentation. I'll turn it over to Mr. Kennedy, Executive Director. Good evening, Councilman Smith. <clears throat> Members of council, you have to excuse me for my voice. <clears throat> Hopefully this will be a lot better. But in change of weather, my voice is starting to leave a little bit. But first of all, I want to thank you all very much for allowing me to be here tonight to present this award to you all. Many of you all know that I am the executive director of Fairfield Baby Health Services, and we provide substance use services to adolescents and adults. Every year in September, we always um, recognize September as Recovery Month because that's a national movement. In that, uh, about three years ago, we started an award uh, in honor of our very first Executive Director, Marion C. Smith, the Honorable Marion C. Smith. And because of his leadership and how he first led this organization into existence and continued it on, and the fact that we're trying to continue that going on forward, we wanted to recognize him and with his approval also um, start a new award. And we did start that award called the Marion C. Smith uh, Leadership Award. And so uh, we have been doing this for the last three years and each year we've had some great um, honorees. And this year um, what generally happens is my staff make a recommendation to me um, for the partners that we work with. And we work with many different partners because we understand when folks come through our doors, they need more than just substance use disorder services. They need DSS, they need the hospital, they need mental health, they need the council. They need many other kinds of services and we pride ourselves on partnering with many different folks. So once I get the recommendations, I give that to the planning and communications, uh, community relations committee of our board. They make the final decision as to who should be the recipient of that award. And this year, I'm, I'm glad to say that Fairfield County Council was chosen um, for this award for many different reasons. Um, some being the fact that we have had uh, a continuous um, partnership with Fairfield County Council and the administration and the maintenance department in not only providing us a place to um, be housed but also providing upkeep of that facility, providing annual funding to us as we continue to provide the services throughout the community and certainly uh, most recently uh, the, annual, the appropriation of uh, capital improvement funds for our new facility and so with that that committee felt that it was deserving that it be awarded and uh, to Fairfield County Council and tonight I would like to present that to you all. First of all I want to say thank you very much for your work, for your support, your partnership. It is vital. We cannot do it without you. We cannot continuously do it without you and so tonight I want to present that award to you tonight. This is the award and I'm going to show it to everyone. It reads Fairfield Behavior Health Services, Imagine the Difference, presents the Marion C. Smith Partner of the Year Award to Fairfield County Council, September the 29th, 2017. Thank you very much, and we hope that you will showcase this very proudly as we appreciate what you have done and continue to do. Absolutely. Thank you.
Thank you, Mr. Kennedy. Um, just uh, appreciate the job that you guys do over there. I know it was uh, kind of a long fought battle to get some of that funding there and some funding from other partners in the state and folks and just glad that uh, you guys were able to accomplish that and uh, look forward to seeing you guys operating in that new facility as I know it'll really help your clientele with the space that it'll provide to you. So Absolutely. Uh, appreciate you sending over the, the photos on the progress as well. Keep those coming. Any other council members have anything to add? I definitely, definitely want to just add to that. Thank you so much for the service that you all render and thank you for your labor of love because I know it is a struggle. Absolutely. But I just want to say thank you so much and I know that uh, community appreciate it and also the clients tell that your service appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right. Okay. Thank you again very much, Mr. Kennedy. We're now down to the first public comment session. Mrs. Davis. We have one speaker tonight, Mr. Randy Bright, to speak on board appointments. Randy Bright, District 1, Ridgeway, Fairfield County. Board and commission appointments, none. Yet on the wall when we come in, just covered with all kinds of openings for for boards and commissions always has been seemingly since I've been around my suggestion would be to maybe adapt to the realities that we just have a hard time and many counties do and many municipalities do period we have a very hard time in, in filling these boards uh, to capacity and I many of them uh, lay fallow for years as far as being at capacity. So perhaps we should uh, adapt our thinking to the realities of this challenge. Maybe we need to adapt some of the rules, allow people to serve on more than one board. Um, and I know already you, you cross district lines when necessary. Maybe we need more of that thinking. Maybe we need uh, shorter board terms or longer board terms. Maybe we need... Um, to interact with uh, outside of our, our individual districts and cooperate amongst each other in, in getting it filled. Whatever it needs to be done, what, and I'm not saying this is something new, this has been going on for a long time and I've been coming to these meetings and we've had a hard time getting people to get on board, literally. So let's adapt. Let's adapt to that reality, and I th threw a few suggestions out there, but uh, I'm sure there's a lot more if you, you put your thinking caps on is, okay, let's not be so rigid. Let's think, what can we do to ensure that we have a continuous, efficient, qualified board on board all the time so that uh, our various agencies can run properly? And remember, the dinosaurs, are 99% of the dinosaurs, didn't adapt. And they didn't work out too well for them. So let's think of that as we look towards adapting to the realities of being unable to fill all of our boards um, all the time. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes segment one. Thank you, Ms. Davis. We're now down to public hearings. There are none. Ordinances, resolutions, and orders. We have two this evening. Item A is first reading by title only of ordinance number 689, an ordinance to amend ordinance number 404, and subsequently ordinance number 529 to reduce the number of members on the Fairfield County Council on Aging Board from nine members to seven members. Do we have a motion? It's been moved and properly seconded to provide first reading to ordinance number 689 as presented. Any discussion? Seeing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Seven and zero on that. First reading is given to ordinance 689. Item B is first reading by title only also ordinance number 690, an ordinance authorizing Fairfield County to purchase 14 acres, a portion of tax map number 134. Dash zero two dash zero zero dash zero three six dash zero 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 for the location of a fire station in the amount of sixty thousand uh, dollars. Any discussion on that? Or excuse me, motion. It's been moved and properly seconded to provide first reading to ordinance number six ninety. Any discussion? Seeing none. Those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Seven and zero. First reading of ordinance six ninety is provided. 
Board and Commission minutes. We have two tonight for the Hospital Board and Disabilities and Special Needs Board. If nobody has any objections or any corrections, we'll do those together. Do we have a motion? So moved, Mr. Chair. Seconded. It's been moved and properly seconded to, to uh, approve the Board and Commission minutes for the Hospital Board and Disability Special Needs Board as presented. Any discussion? Seeing none, those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Seven and zero on that. Uh, board and commission appointments, none. No old business, no new business. And we're now down to the county administrator's report. Mr. Taylor. Uh, on his department as we do at each council meeting, but I don't see him. So we will move on uh, to our next item, which is the concerns that have been expressed previously with Cambio Academy. We've had a number of uh, calls from the Sheriff's Department, a number of complaints from citizens about Cambio Academy. And uh, council at the last council meeting had asked me to look into that to see what could be done to, to improve that situation. To that end, we have met with the director of the facility, Ms. Wood. We had a I think a productive meeting with her this morning. In fact, she's here tonight um, to hear council's concerns, any citizens that may want to speak concerns and answer any questions possibly too. But we did find in looking into this um, that there are problems uh, occurring at Cambio Academy. Uh, we're hoping we can do some things to fix those problems. It appears um, Cambio and uh, in that community, there's certain levels of care you have depending on what your situation is, uh, which uh, then determines what facility is appropriate for you to go into. I do feel, and Ms. Wood felt also, that a number of children, uh, and they do have just girls there now, a number of uh, the, the girls that they have uh, are inappropriate to the level of care that, it, that Cambio provides. Uh, she has identified, I think, eight to ten that probably do not need to be in that facility but need to be somewhere else that has a higher level of care. Uh, and I, I think several things have come together in the past. DSS is need. They contract with DSS. And DSS, of course, has a need to place uh, some of their difficult um, clients. And, and that's what's happened is some of those difficult ones have been inappropriately placed there out of a kind of path of least resistance. And, and, and they probably should have been placed somewhere else more appropriately. So she's going to try to address that, first of all, get some of these that are consistently causing problems that were inappropriately placed there and inappropriately accepted into Cambio to be placed somewhere else. Also, we looked at the facility itself. We had a discussion with her about what can be done as far as a more secure facility. Right now, the doors are not locked. Uh, we had discussions of a fence, and, and we really didn't like um, the possibility of putting up a barbed wire fence. We don't think that would look very good, send the wrong message. So we do have our, our interim uh, fire marshal going out to look at it to see what can be done, whether it's a lock system or, even, um, and, or the sheriff who was in the meeting also, he suggested maybe an alarm system. You know, if a door is opened, um, an alarm would go off by someone who was not authorized to open that door. Uh, so those are some of the things we're looking at. We will follow up uh, with our meeting that we had with Ms. Wood with a, a list of these things and hopefully put a time frame attached to that as to when we can expect and hope to see improvements. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Taylor. I don't know if any council members wanted to comment on that. I know it's been a topic of great concern for folks. Ms. Goins? Yes, I want to thank you so much for um, working toward a solution on that and um, because I did get an email, I think it was on yesterday, concerning that situation again, and I know that somehow we could have a, a reasonable solution to it. So thank you all so much and looking forward to working with them to resolve that. Thank you, Mrs. Goins. Anyone else? I'll just add that um, I've heard a, a lot of concerns on, on the, uh, the facility as well and um, certainly understand the mission and, and hope that it's, uh, it's done properly going forward. I appreciate Mr. Taylor uh, reaching out and having that meeting and the other folks that have been involved as well from the Sheriff's Department and I know the Senator and State Representative have even gotten involved and, and uh, Fire Marshal now getting involved with it and the folks at Cambio as well for being willing to meet. But um, I, I'll just say I hope that the the concerns and the, the things that are going on now can be curtailed and corrected because otherwise I just don't see where we can allow that facility, uh, you know, without without trying to do anything to keep operating in that community in the way it is right now. So I hope it is cleaned up. Thank you very much. And I will add one more note on that, that we will be having a community meeting with some of the uh, out in the community. I think this Wednesday the sheriff and I will be there to, to listen to the community's concerns also. Thank you very much. And what time is that? And location? I got it on my desk at 6.30 at the church. Greenbrier Methodist Church. Okay, Greenbrier Methodist Church. At 6.30 this Wednesday. Okay. Thank you very much. 
I see Jake Gaston did just come in. <laughs> and uh, We do have him on the agenda to speak and, and give an update on the Public Works Department. So, Jake, if you'll come on up at this time and give council an update on what you're doing in your department and answer any questions they may have. Good evening, council. I didn't realize y'all would have got that far that quick. <laughs> um, public works, uh, road maintenance, solid waste, and recycling. Um, just to give a brief overview of, of what we do, give everybody a um, little education, I guess, if you if you don't know what we already do. But so, public works, basically, what I said, you know, who are we? Um, we have two departments under public works, road maintenance and solid waste and solid waste and recycling. It's all under um, public works, uh, 28 full-time employees, um, 16 under road maintenance and 12 into solid waste. Uh, we have about 40 recycling attendants, which are temporary employees, so <laughs> fully staffed for about 68 uh, employees. Um, what we do... Um, do, uh, do do quite a quite a bit, um, but mainly we maintain county roads, right of ways, um, dirt and paved roads. We have about 300 miles um, total, um, uh, about 82 miles of paved roads, 180 paved roads total. Um, rest being dirt, we maintain, as I said, the uh, ditches, the grass on the side, um, drainage pipes, potholes, county bridges as well. Um, County projects, um, you know, try and try and do as much as we can to uh, to help out in house, and so we um, clearing land, building pads for projects, um, pipes, install, uh, punching it roadways. Just recently done some work out at the industrial park um, as they're doing some logging out there. So um, any kind of county projects that we can help within other departments, um, uh, county buildings we maintain. Um, driveways, the um, fire recreation administration, EMS stations, um, uh, as I said, installing driveway pipes for the citizens. If you live on a county, county road, um, we'll install a drainage pipe, 24 feet of concrete pipe, uh, no cost, <coughs> um, street signs. Um, you got state roads, county roads, but um, the county handles all the street signs, so if you see any street signs down, then that would that would come to our office. Um, assisting emergency personnel, EMS, transit, um, 911. Um, some situations you have EMS may call and say, "Hey, we had a you know tough time getting into so and so's residence. We went to pick them up. We'll go out and put some rock on there, grade that off for them, um, help out any way we can there." CTC, that's uh, County Transportation Committee. Um, we partner with them. We get funds from the state every year um, to pave county dirt roads. Triple treatment is the process. It's called, um, I'll kind of briefly try and just explain that treatment. It's um, soil cement is, is what it's called. And so basically you got a county road, which we've been, you know, we've, we've maintained for years, got crush and run on there. Um, contractors will come in basically like a big tiller. They grind it up about eight to 10 inches deep, um, mix, uh, mix the soil um, with uh, powdered cement, and uh, then they roll it with the water and give it a, gives it a good hard base, eight to 10 inches deep, um, come through with a layer of tar and gravel. That's the second treatment. And then, the, uh, then they'll come back around again with another layer of tar and gravel. Um, for the third third treatment, the final resurface, that's where the triple treatment uh, comes from. I got SCDOT on there. We work with the DOT right away, help them where we can. Um, snow and ice agreement, um, get a big snow. Um, obviously, the state has a lot of a lot of major highways and roadways to maintain. Um, a lot of times they're focused on on your interstates and so um, and your major highways. So we have an agreement with them. We'll take our motor graders out, help them um, wherever we can. How do we do it? Um, obviously, without the equipment and the and the manpower, we couldn't do it. So we're we're fortunate that um, we got a good council and we've got a good support staff. Mr. Taylor and Mr. Anderson um, provide us with the equipment we need. We have. 
three motor graders that we um, most time we run two pretty much year round scraping pulling ditches on county roads. Um, the third grader we have with our lead operator with the dump trucks he comes around puts puts crushing runs on on the roads. Um, I got a backhoe on there do a lot of things with the backhoe, um, but the equipment is, is how we do it. Um, front end loaders we have two front end loaders this is uh, one that we have now actually it's at our wood chipping facility because we get a lot more use out of it there um, we have one front end loader we keep at our at the camp we call it at public works where we load load trucks in and out daily um, single axle dump trucks um, hauling gravel back and forth to the job site um, pick up trucks and trailers as you see here the picture in the lower left is a picture at the wood chipping facility on Old Airport Road um, where we haul tires from the recycling centers. We load them in this trailer um, and then they're recycled by Liberty Tire Recycling. Patching machine, um, probably seen that before. State has two of those. We uh, just recently partnered with the CTC a couple years ago, um, which is pretty neat actually. Um, we the, the more we get into paving roads, the more roads we get. We realize, well, we've got to make changes. We have to, you know, um, educate ourselves on, on how to maintain those roads. And so the patching machine, uh, we partnered with the CTC. Uh, they actually were the, the first and only CTC program that was able to partner with the county and purchase half of that piece of equipment for us. Uh, we pull it behind a dump truck. Um, spray you got a pothole you spray your tar in there and then you spray your spray your gravel in there um, to patch your potholes and so it works well um, we use it pretty much daily um, so all all that all those equipment that we use daily um, same here as we're talking about um, bulldozer um, 1980 cat dozer that we've got but it um it's a good working good working piece of equipment um doesn't allow us to do quite all that we're getting into but we um but it it is it is good and, and it provides for us what we need um the picture on the right i've got ctc project this is a picture that we took um one of the roads that we were paving this is kind of like your final product as you'll see when you get to the to end of the road you have tar and gravel um that's just a picture of uh, one of our paved roads that the CTC program works with us on. Um, as I said, we got road maintenance and then solid waste and recycling. Solid waste, we got 12 full-time employees. As I said, about 40 temporary attendants. Um, 11 collection centers, we call them trash drop-off and recycling. Um, one wood chipping and a waste tire facility. Um, we provide trash service and recycling as well to all the schools in Fairfield County. Um, we also provide trash service and recycling at all the county buildings. Um, some of the other things we do, Salkahatchee Group, if you are familiar with them. If you're not, um, we partner with Salkahatchee every year. They come in, they'll have 12 to 15 um, houses that they're doing some work on. We'll provide the dumpsters for them. Um, they'll call us, we'll come pick it up, dump it, um, provide that service to work with them at no cost. Um, code enforcement, very similar situation. You got an issue with a, an old abandoned house or trailer, some you know, code enforcement. Um, you know, we're trying to clean things up, so we'll, we'll provide a dumpster for that. Um, the folks will tear it down. We provide the dumpster. We don't, we don't tear it down, but we'll provide the dumpster and, and haul it off as well for them. Um, community cleanups, um, as you know, pig on the ridge like we just recently had, rock around the clock. We'll, we'll drop off two or three dumpsters uh, a few days before those events. Um, we'll, we'll put gravel where we need to to help out in those situations, but we provide the trash and um, clean up for the community cleanups and, um, and those events as well. As I said, we got 11 collection centers, um, drop-off sites. They're open 7 to 7. Every day except for Wednesday, uh, we used to be closed Wednesday. We recently changed that to seven to one. Um, try and give everybody opportunity to um, to have a chance to, to drop off their trash and recycle when they can. Also open on Sunday, um, two to six p.m. Um, kind of we, we're kind of proud of that. I talked to 
D heck, um, I think it was last year sometime we were looking at, you know, maybe going from seven to one or, or keeping Wednesday closed um, and found out we're actually the only the only county that's open every single day, um, at some point to some degree. A lot are Monday, Wednesday, Friday and then maybe one once on the weekend. So that's something that we do take pride in. We're glad to offer that to our residents. Um uh, Fairfield County, kind of a unique situation. We don't have a landfill in the county. We have a transfer station. So I say, what do we take? Um, pretty much everything. Um, if you if you've been to our locations, we we try and make it as user friendly as possible. You got on 321. Um, you know, you can back up. You got a wall there. You can dump it right in. You don't have to lift a you know a, a big heavy chair. Um, so we pretty much take everything there. We haul it from our drop off sites. To waste management transfer station, which is located right beside the public works building. Um, transfer station, then they actually haul that material to Columbia to a landfill. Um, recycling, as everybody knows, recycling is growing more and more every day. Um, so we'd like to recycle everything we possibly can, save cost as well as keep um, keep those products, you know, re recirculating throughout. Um, so we recycle as much as we can right now, aluminum cans, uh, batteries, cardboard magazines, office paper, newspapers, uh, cooking oil, as you know, um, I think it's uh, Midlands Biofuel started right here in Winsburg, expanding, um, so we partner with them. We, they, have, uh, they have their containers at our recycling centers, um, which actually, they just sent us a... Um, a little briefing they want us to make sure you know thanksgiving's coming up so you got any any cooking oil make sure you try and drop that off at the recycling centers um it's a good thing uh, electronics um a few years ago electronics they passed a uh, a ban you know cannot take them to the landfill um got things in there that don't want going there so when it when it first started um said well we've got a, a company they're gonna take it all for free they want everything they want everything out of those electronics. They can recycle it, and they can kind of long story short, took it free for quite some time, um, got overloaded, so we had to venture out. So now we do have a, a vendor who picks that up for us, but any TVs, um, monitors, basically, easy way, anything with a plug um, can be recycled. Drop it off at our drop-off centers. Our guys will pick it up, um, haul it over to a, a county building, where we um, we actually use some some boxes that we get from Lang Mecra, we package it in that uh, box truck comes. We load it with a uh, forklift, um, and and then they haul it all for us and recycle that. Um, glass for years we didn't recycle glass. It's, glass is a tough commodity um, as far as generating any revenue from it. But the way I look at it is. It's fifty-five dollars a ton if it goes to the transfer station. So every every ton of glass that we recycle is is fifty-five dollars that, that that we're not spending. Um, and so glass, take that at all the recycling centers now. Um, motor oil, use motor oil. Um, we now um, through our grants grants process, we have um, motor oil containers at every drop-off location. Oil filters we recycle. Plastics, um, your water bottles, anything, one e an easy way to, um, you know, kind of know, because a lot of times you'll get what's well, plastic, be recycled, you know, a five-gallon bucket. Um, at this point in time at Sunoco where we haul our um, plastics can't be recycled, but an easy way to, to if you're wondering if, it, if it'll screw on, then, um, then you can recycle it. So any kind of water bottles, your, your drinks, um, that sort of thing. Plastics, we recycle that. Scrap metal um, appliances, that would be our um, biggest revenue generated um, um, recyclable, recyclable good there. We take everything at our drop off sites, take it to a location. Then we have a company who comes in, they load all that up and then they'll, and they send a check to the county. Um, tires and yard trimmings. Tires, just like the electronics, are a um, uh, mandated by the, by the state. Can't go to the landfill. So, so of course, we recycle those. Um, a lot of tires, um, and in the yard trimmings. Uh, if you're familiar with our wood chipping facility, um, that's where you, your mulch comes from. 
How we do it, um, solid waste, just like road maintenance, obviously can't do it without the equipment and the guys. Um, we have four roll-off trucks um, rotate the county, you know, Monday through Friday. Um, these trucks pick up at the county buildings as well as your schools. Um, the limb truck, uh, picture on the right side there, goes around recycling centers daily, picking up limbs, stumps, debris, any, any kind of thing that doesn't go to our chipper site that we take at the drop-off site. This truck here you'll see on site picking that up. Um, daily pickup, as I said, uh, we pick up centers daily. Um, the recycled goods, a lot of that is picked up by pickups and trailers. Guys actually boots on the ground um, picking that material up. They'll put it on trailers, haul it to the locations. We have a cardboard baler site um, on Old Airport Road as well. All of our cardboard magazines, newspapers um, goes to Old Airport Road where we have a baler on site. We have some temporary guys that bail that. Um, wood chipping, waste tire facility. Um, as I mentioned, this Old Airport Road open Monday through Friday, 7 to 7, um, Saturday 8 to 2. All the debris that comes in from the county we grind that into mulch, and um, and it's free to county citizens. Um, thank you very much. That's that's all I got for us. And if you got any questions, be glad to take them now. Thank you very much, Mr. Gass. Any questions, council members? Mr. Yes, Douglas, um, you mentioned triple treatment. Is that just done in certain areas? Or is it done everywhere? It, yeah, it's done about everywhere now. Um, Actually, uh, the DOT does it a lot as well. It's um, The road you know, I use the most is uh, Old Chester Road, and uh, I've never seen that done on that road. Now, a lot all of they do is put tar on top, and then a day later, it's all busted loose again and got still got big holes in it. Um, well, in Old Chester Road, um, a state road, I guess they you know can kind of choose what, what process they're going to use. Um, yeah. A lot of times, they patch those secondary roads. But I do know that the state is doing a lot of the, the base treatment, the soil cement, what a lot of the asphalt obviously is going the longevity of it is, is more. It's going to get a smoother ride than the tar and gravel. But what the state's doing a lot of situations now is they actually mix the, the soil cement, get the, the good base, and then come on top of that with asphalt so you get a better riding surface. Um, I think typically, you know, the state would prefer to asphalt asphalt and binder because it's going to last longer but the, the cost is is so much more with asphalt and that's yeah. the biggest reason the ctc chose um the triple treatment process is basically you can get about a mile of asphalt for about a million bucks versus what we're doing we get 20 25 roads a year for about a million dollars with that triple treatment process and it all depends on your your traffic you know heavy truck traffic it's going to be a little tougher on it but um to my knowledge, they haven't used this, the triple treatment on old uh, old Chester Road. No. Your cardboard boxes and stuff that you collect. All other counties that I've dealt with makes the people break the boxes down to make them flat. Yes. Put sir. them into the trailers and stuff, and you can put ten times more stuff into trailers. Why is it the county going to uh, breaking these boxes down to carry more? Um. Now we do try. We do try and get get folks to break them down. A lot of times, you know, they can't. But when we haul them to our baler site, we we do break them down because they, in order to bail them and to get a, a maximum bail, they have to be broke down. Well, we have to pay somebody to do that. Why not just tell them they have to break them down? Because all the other right. counties make them break them down. They don't ask them to. They tell them you got to do it at the drop off sites. Right. I'm assuming. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, that's something we we can obviously try and enforce more. We do tell the attendants to, to tell folks to break them down. Um, a lot of times I think they probably just choose not to, but we do tell them to break them down. Mm -hmm. Mr. Roof? Thank you, Jake. Um, on, on the county dirt roads, when you put the triple treatment they're starting to use now, is it? Do you go back? And I know we talked to uh, David some about this. Does somebody one go back and inspect the thickness to make sure that it's done properly? How does that? Um, CTC has an engineer. I'll try and speak for the committee on that. But um, infrastructure engineering, they right. do have an an engineer who handles that. Um, they have an inspector on site during 
And after all the roads are completed before we sign off and, and pay them their final retainage, myself as well as the engineer, uh, Mr. Coleman, will we'll ride all the roads and to make sure everything was done properly. Um, but yes, it is, it's in the specs and it is inspected by them. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, there was one, I think, out of Ridgeway Elbow Circle, I think was the name of it. And, and I yep, think now we are, we're looking into it. We're going to make sure that everything okay. was done. And they, done they may not be through, but anyway, okay. Yes, sir. Good. We are aware of right. it. I appreciate it. Thanks. Yes, sir. Sure. Thank you. Real quickly, um, just on the roads, uh, Mr. Gaston, while we have you here, and, and I know there are a lot of folks uh, in the room who may have had questions uh, about it. I get questions all the time. Can you explain to us a little bit where on the road paving, how those roads are paved, uh, you know, how those roads are chosen and prioritized, where the CTC kind of drops it off and turns it over to us. A lot of people don't understand that the CTC, uh, which is, is folks aboard who's appointed by your, your uh, House and Senate member, actually make a lot of the decisions, and then we, we kind of take it from there and implement it. But can you talk about that just a little bit, just so people understand that? Sure. Yes, sir. Um, CTC, the, the committee, um, you know, they work with myself as well as the engineer. They come up with a formula um, depending on the width of the road. Um, how many residents is on the road. Um, I've actually got the, the formula and, and I can make some copies, pass that out as well. But it's a it's a it's all on a point system um, by district. And so, you know, say you have five houses on one road, um, the width of it, depending on the, the traffic, school buses, um, permanent residents, uh, all that calculates into a formula and then that's how they get that's how they get the points. Um, and so that's that's something that the CTC committee, you know, they decide on that. Um, I think every three years, you know, they update that book. They'll have the engineers actually ride the roads, make sure everything is is up to date. But it's it's um, it's just a formula that they come up with. They changed, you know, recently some years ago because, um, you know, like in I guess in their opinion, a cut through road has some value to it because it's connecting something versus a dead end. Um, and so I believe it's five points, five points added if it's a cut through, um, and ties in with other roads. But it's a it's a formula, and that's how they come up with the points. And it they don't just you know pick one here and there. They if we finish up, say the money runs out um, in District Four, then next year District Five would be at the top, and they'll start at the list. You know, here's District Five. We're gonna start here. Five, six, seven, one, two, three. It just alternates, um, but we go straight down the list um, on the points. All right, thank you. I just wanted to ask you also, and you might have had it up there. I may have just missed it, but I know that we had approved in the budgeting process an incinerator for the uh, wood chipping facility that we all kind of looked at as maybe a cost-saving measure out there. Have we gotten that piece of equipment yet? Are we using it? We Well, we're working on it right now to try and get it permitted through DHEC. We've actually got uh, Davis and Floyd, one of the engineers, just on, on board with the county, uh, working on getting it permitted to get it past air quality. So a little bit of paperwork and that sort of thing, but we're in the process of getting it passed through now. Okay, so have we already purchased? No, sir. Okay, we haven't. No. Okay, okay. No, sir. all right. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Anything for Mr. Gaston? Thank you very much. Appreciate okay. it. Right. Thank you all. Well, the next item I have builds on um, the previous conversation. Again, it, it goes into the road priority list. Um, as, as was mentioned, the CTC each year, they choose a group of roads to pay based on a point system. This year, they've released the list of roads. I think all council members should have a copy of that. Uh, they anticipate spending roughly $800,000, as they do most years. Uh, the road with the most priority points this year was Bluebird, and so that should be the first paved. The longest and the most expensive uh, section of road would be Water Creek Valley, uh, which would cost $165,000 to be eight-tenths of a mile. Uh, we do have a full list we can make available to anyone who would like a copy of that also. Next item I have, um, just an update on department, uh, departmental updates, um, essentially uh, on our department heads. We have a number of department heads that we will be hiring for coming up shortly, the airport, the recreation, and the planning department. We also just got a notification that Mr. Tony Hill, our fire marshal, will be retiring and we'll be advertising that position also. Uh, I did want to mention also concerning the airport specifically, uh, we did... Uh, in switching over from our FBO to our in-house in management, we found that uh, our gas tanks had not ever been permitted by DHEC, so that's causing us an issue. 
uh, we will have to go back and pay all past permitting fees that we had not paid, uh, which will total $9,600. Is there any way we can charge that to the previous fixed base operator? Uh, I don't know that that's the case that we can do that. We will well, I think we need it. to find out. But we're finding that that's the case, and also, of course, uh, not having had them permitted and not having had them inspected properly, they're going to shut those down, and we'll have to replace them, and we'll have to find a temporary solution, uh, and we're looking at that, and hopefully we'll have that resolved by Wednesday, so there'll be almost no interruption for gas services at the airport, but we are, are finding that to be the case. I uh, just want to let council know that. So that's all I had. Any questions or anything for Mr. Taylor? All right, thank you very much. We're now down to clerk to council report. There's none. Second public comment session, Ms. Davis. We have two to speak tonight. First, Mr. Randy Sisk on Fairfield Memorial. Good evening, council. A couple questions and a couple facts about Fairfield Memorial. Did Fairfield Memorial administration take the pay reduction that Councilwoman Pauley discussed. The hospital has shrunk in employee size. Do they need the salary that they currently have? Fairfield Memorial is closing. That's a fact. Um, it's hemorrhaging money. It does not have the income of patients needed. Uh, to pay for the ER, and, and what I'm talking about the E, not the ER, excuse me, but it's the hospital. And um, there's not enough patients being treated in the hospital section, and, and again, the ER is separate. Um, but we don't have enough people there to pay for staff there, not even to break even. What staff we have there is truly looking for other jobs. They know their day is coming. Wouldn't it be better if we just closed off the hospital and just cut it? Um, you know, medical terms, it's terminal. It's going to close. So, you know, be kind to the taxpayer. Can we... Just let everybody go except for the ER, the lab, and the x-ray. Turn over your administration to a third party, uh, maybe to Providence. Um, let's just close it. Uh, let's don't drag it out. I mean, I, I, as a paramedic, I've tried to get plenty of people to go there. That day is come and gone. It's going to close. Let's don't drag it out. And, uh, you know, the hospital, and I'm not an engineer there, but as a whole, the hospital runs heat, AC, water, power. Can we shut the majority of the hospital down? Can we put some plywood walls up to stop traffic, stop the AC and the heat? Uh, to save, I believe, the town of Winsboro is paying the power bill for them. I don't know if the county, if y'all helped the city, but town is, is getting the backside of that one. But uh, we, I think, you know, as a taxpayer, we just need to go ahead and cut it. It's not being used. Uh, for the amount of employees that we have now, do we need the four administrations. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Next, Mr. Randy Bright speaking on whatever happened to. Randy Bright, District 1, Ridgeway. As a hospital board member and somebody who knows what's going on at the hospital, I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, respond to some of the points that uh, Mr. Sis pointed out. Um, I could be here all night uh, pointing out the disinformation. Is a hospital under financial strengths, restraints, and constraints? Absolutely. Is a hospital tried to do something about it? Absolutely. 
Over the last two years, the hospital has cut expenses by $1.6 million. So the hospital has made and continues to make efforts to address these issues. Um, as far as, you, you can't look at whether, whatever organization, you can't just look at a certain section and say, well, let's just take this piece out. Let's just take that piece out. There's a lot of pieces to the puzzle. And in order to effectively operate the hospital, you have to have those pieces. And as Randy indicated, there are several departments that support uh, the ER. And the ER has got to stay open. I think everyone would agree. We can't be a county without an ER. So without further ado, there's a lot more analysis that needs to take place, which the board um, has taken action and is continuing to take action towards this hospital. So I didn't intend to defend the hospital, but um, acting on a little information is very dangerous. You need the whole story. If anyone wants to go over the financials with me, I'm always available. So please don't hesitate. But a little information can be very dangerous. Now, let me move on. Uh, my question today. As far as uh, updates, well, very quickly, you guys did a good job of adapting uh, in many cases, and you've tabled a lot of uh, issues, uh, such as the courthouse, administration building, the industrial land purchase, and the Ridgeway Recreation Center. Do we have any updates on those tabling? And also, do we have any updates on our intergovernmental productivity analysis and web page enhancements, not only for the county's entire web page, but more importantly, uh, the web page for um, economic development, and will that web page for economic development be actually listed on the county site? Right now, there's no ease in, in the uh, services listed in the uh, index that's on the county site. So just a few questions I have. Sorry I didn't have time to go over it, but um, I felt the rest of the information was more important. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes segment two. Right, we are now down to county council time. Any council members have anything? Ms. Goins. Good evening. Um, would like to say in the response to the boards and commission appointments, we do have flyers that are being put out, and also there were some on the table as well as an application that goes with that. And persons that have already selected those um, items, please share them with somebody else, make copies, and pass them out in the communities that everyone or anyone that want to would have an opportunity. And the second item I'd like to say, on uh, December 16th, which is the third Saturday in December, would like to hold a community meeting at the Recreation Center, and it will be from 11 to 1 p.m., and this is the Recreation Center in Jenkinsville. Tentatively, uh, we'll have another one in February, and that's on the third Saturday, which is the 17th of February, in the Greenbrier community at the fire department there. And this is just to communicate, uh, I call it table talking, with the community to find out what you're thinking, what your concerns are, how we can um, address issues or problems that we are not aware of, or maybe we are aware of, and we can work for a solution. So this would be my first um, and doing this, but I do intend to continue a process of doing this throughout the year. And would like to pass that information on, invite your neighbors, invite friends, let people know. I will have flyers out circulating. Please let people know. I'm going to come out and just share what we can do to build Fairfield County. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Goins. Mr. Roof. Mr. Chair, yeah, um, just a couple things as far as... Uh, the board and commission vacancies in District 1. Um, we have uh, Aeronautics Commission um, Assessment and Appeals and Disability and Special Needs. And and so, and I'm also, so anybody that would be interested, uh, please contact me because we, we need to fill those. And I'm not opposed to us adapting, as uh, Randy Bright suggested, one thing is people serving on multiple boards. 
if we can't find because it is difficult to find people that are that are willing and it takes time some of these do and a lot of people don't have time but the people that are willing to do it and have the time to do it i think we all allow them to do it and um um and i really appreciate all the people that do serve because it is it, it is a it is a um, giving up of their time um, but also as far as you mentioned recreation uh ridgeway recreation uh, funds were approved or reapproved back several months ago, and we've had several meetings with some of the town council, Ridgeway, and Jason Taylor, and myself. And and um, we don't have anything definite yet, but it, but it's coming in in the future. Hopefully, we can get more bang for for our buck than we did on the first go around on some of these. So maybe it was a good thing that we postponed this, and so hopefully we can get more for our money on this one so thank you that's all thank you mr roof mr douglas um the town of winsboro and fairford memorial hospital are working in conjunction with each other and they they're paying their own bills as far as electric uh, they don't the, they're up to date they worked out an arrangement and they're paying each each month like they should be doing uh the board recently had a work session and closed uh, the blue granite and the cardiac rehab at the hospital. Uh, if if you want to really learn what and how hard the board's working, the best thing to do is to come to a board meeting and uh, attend the meeting and find out what's going on. And that's the easiest way to find out. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Robinson. Mr. Chair, I just have two announcements. Uh, on November the nineteenth, I will be presenting Calvary. Presbyterian a 150th anniversary proclamation so anyone that would like to attend please come out and give their help me give them some their recognition also from February of 2017 to 11 10 of this year myself council along with administration have been uh, taking sessions with the Economic Development Institute and let me just say it's not given out uh, your diploma, you actually have to earn it with a, a uh, percentage. Um, it, it shows me that as an administrator, M Mr. Uh, Taylor, economic development, Mr. Uh, Julius Weathers, and Mr. Davenport, it shows that they have the willingness to learn and is you're not never too old to learn because it's, it's so much information out there that we have to keep abreast with. And we've we've visited various communities, various counties, and it and it entails me that we're not the only ones in the situation that we're in. Greenwood, I mean, they have a beautiful economic development team. Their downtown development is just wonderful. Uh, Charleston, uh, where else have we been? Uh, Greer, yeah, Greer is just wonderful. And like I said, they were in the same situation we're in, so. With us by, by us going and graduating, it shows us that we are willing to put forth the effort to make Fairfield County what it needs to be. So, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Robinson. Anyone else? All right. At this time, we'll move on to uh, the next item on the agenda. That's executive session. Uh, we'll go into executive session tonight to discuss a contractual matter regarding an update on a sewer agreement with the town of Great Falls. Um, just like to state that. Um, in compliance with the South Carolina Freedom of Information Act, subsequent to executive session, council may take action on matters discussed in executive session. We have a motion. It's been moved and properly seconded to go into executive session for the purpose as stated. Any discussion? Seeing none, those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? 7-0, now in executive session. Thank you.